Hello, and welcome to the ArtsLink Assembly. Uh, I'm Simon Dav. I'm the Executive Director of CEC ArtsLink. Uh, and this is the beginning of week two of our five-week virtual assembly this year, bringing together artists and arts organizations to discuss the role of artists and art practice in building and maintaining civil society and achieving uh, social justice. Today and tomorrow, we're gonna to focus on Beirut, a city that was completely devastated by the explosion on August the 4th. Um, tomorrow, curator Amanda Abi Khalil will be in conversation with visual artists and arts organizations. But today, uh, I'm very happy to welcome a longtime friend and colleague, Omar Raje. Omar is a choreographer, a dancer, and tireless organizer, uh, setting up the, uh, amongst many other things, the Lebanese contemporary dance platform, the, uh, the Arab dance platform, and many other initiatives, as well as building spaces in the city to present live arts. So today, uh, Omar and his panel will really focus on the relationship between uh, live arts and how artists and arts organizations are looking to rebuild after the explosion. Omar. Hello, Simon. Thank you for the invitation. It's a real pleasure uh, to be with you here on this assembly. And um, I would like to, uh, to actually invite the uh, three artists that I was happy uh, that we could share this uh, conversation together. So, uh, Mia Habis, Alexander Polikevich, and uh, Hatim Imam. I'm really happy that uh, you could join me on this uh, in this conversation. And maybe we could start um, quickly with introducing yourself briefly as well. Mia, you? Yes, sure. Um, I'm Mia Hadis. I'm a dancer and uh, co-artistic director of uh, Makamat uh, and Bipod, Beirut International Platform of Dance. Um, the, the company uh, is initially based in uh, Beirut. Um, my name is Hatim Imam. Oh, sorry, go ahead, Alex. Um, uh, I'm, my name is Alex, I'm a dancer and a choreographer, and I'm happy to be here. Um, my name is Hatim Imam, I'm a graphic designer, a publisher, and a visual artist. And uh, thank you, Omar, for the invitation, and Simon as well, thank you for this uh, opportunity. Well, thank you. This is, uh, I'm sure this is a very brief introduction of uh, what you do in, in Beirut and uh, your contribution also to the cultural scene in Beirut. And that's why actually I would like to, to start uh, with um, imagining that we are sitting in a cafe in Beirut. I miss, I miss it, honestly, I miss it a lot. And discussing uh, things, of course, we can dream, joke, waste time. And at some point we get excited about ideas that we want to implement. I guess we strongly believe in what we were and still doing. And I hope we can still dream of a different future. Definitely not one that is full of death and destruction, but one full of life, of intimacy, of gatherings, of parties, a lot of parties. Um, personally, for me, this roller coaster we, we have lived through that started um, with the forced dismantling of Sitan Beirut in August 2019, then the political and economic collapse in Lebanon, uh, leaving the country uh, also in December, followed by the COVID-19 global crisis, and finally the huge ex explosion, devastating explosion also that destroyed half of the city, uh, killing and injuring thousands. All of these incidents, together with news of unrest, demonstrations, unfortunate accidents, and inequality all over the world, proposes many questions about our own 
um, architecture as humans in crisis, maybe our thoughts and behavior, reflections of reality and um, of a reality uh, that is destroyed as well. We could be complaining on many things and we have the full right to complain about everything. However, meanwhile, we have to check, test or question if we are able to continue and how. So um, I would like to start with Alex. Alex, you were arrested during the demonstrations. Your house is destroyed in the explosion and uh, you were asked to, uh, to be in front of a military judge or court as an artist recently. <laughs> How do you navigate with this? Honestly, uh, I think at some point I am in denial because it's just too much to handle. Um, but uh, I chose to face it. And honestly, the best thing I was able to do is to work on my new creation, is to just uh, forget myself in, uh, in the process of uh, creating a new piece. Uh, a bit in denial about everything, but it's, I think, a defense mechanism in order to be able to continue. It's, there's nothing that helps us to get going. So we need to find a strength somewhere and uh, a force to be able to just stay on the road, stay focused, and it is not a simple deal. Yes, yes, I, I, I totally understand, but I'm curious actually to know, like, how do you go on with your day? Like, if, if we, we want to, to, um, to, like, what happens in a normal day? Uh, are, you, are you in the city? You, I know that you, you go outside, you try to, I, I'm sorry, I'm sorry if it's, uh, you can, like, it's up to you to tell us no. how much you like, yes. Of course. Uh, my days are honestly, it's, um, it's reconstruction. It's uh, just uh, caring for my ho house, dealing with uh, uh, people that are fixing my house up. So it's just uh, building back, building again. But I, I ran away from all this. I, when I can, I run away from all this and I go up to the mountain where I am now and uh, just to bask in nature, to reconnect to something more uh, uh, peaceful and beautiful and uh, that gives me strength and centers me. So it's really uh, a long, I can have a days of long hours of hiking, uh, swimming in the river. I, I try to do things that gives me power, strength, and peace because we need it. We need it. And we have a lot of beauty in our country. So I prefer yeah. to connect to what's really the, the, the core uh, essence of our country that makes us love it. And even you in France, I know how much you suffer from being outside. And this is what you love about the country, not the politics, not the all the what we are living, living through, but we know that we connect to a certain image of, of Lebanon that a lot don't know outside because they only know about explosion, war, and, 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 but we, we do have a lot that this country can give us. And this is what I connect to. For sure, Aki, yes, definitely, definitely. I like, for me also, even with this situation at the moment, I can imagine even before the explosion, uh, when when we started working and when I started the company in 2002, even with the festival, with Bipod and uh, trying, thinking of how we could like um, build this, grow more regionally, internationally, create more exchanges. I was also at the same time, I was um, concerned with, with building this infrastructure for the dance in Beirut, a framework or a strategy in which we could, um, we could grow individually and collectively. Um, and it's, it was already the situation was always difficult. It was always uneasy. Uh, having to deal with a deaf ministry of culture, with a corrupted system, navigating through things. I can imagine even even now with with 
with all this, uh, like what I, I said, roller coaster this year, how is the situation? So I, maybe I could also, we can, uh, maybe Hatim, you can join us. Do you feel from your perspective, because also I know that you're uh, through the, through Safar, through Journal Safar, through you, you and you're as a curator also, do you feel um, there is like, are we, how are we dealing with these strategies to create a framework to hold our work together? How, how can we do that to secure what we have achieved to a certain extent? And maybe to, to think of uh, how are we able to continue creating? Um, I mean, it's, uh, it's uh, you know, like it's, you know, when people are in a situation of, you know, like some sort of disaster or, uh, you know, like uh, under this kind of like insane amount of violence, um, the first thing that you do, you know, like as Alex said, is, you know, like it's the immediate uh, reaction is to start rebuilding or uh, start working on, on, on new things. Um, and this is something that, you know, like we, we have learned, you know, like we've, we've seen this, uh, you know, like from the generation of our parents as well, you know, like we know that if there's an explosion or there's, a, you know, like some kind of destruction, that, you know, like within minutes, you start people, you know, you start seeing people clearing up the rubble and, you know, like securing everything in place and making sure that, you know, like that, that they could continue to live, you know, like, uh, and to, to get back to that sense of safety. And I think that this is something that, you know, like is not unique about, uh, about the Lebanese, because I mean, like we hear a lot of this kind of uh, slogan of, you know, like the resilience of the Lebanese people. I don't think that this is, I think that it's a dangerous uh, claim to, to, to pose. Um, and I think that this is something that any, um, any person under, under this kind of distress would, would, you know, like resort to, to the same kind of uh, uh, action. Um, so, I mean, for us, of course, you know, like our studio got destroyed um, and, you know, like the next day we were there starting to, to clear things and we moved, you know, like the essential things and, you know, within, I think I would say maybe a week or 10 days, we were almost like back at work somehow. And again, it's not something to, to, be, to be very happy about because right now, you know, like I was sitting today with Lean, uh, who, who works with us and uh, she, you know, like now we're feeling, you know, like all of the, maybe the anguish that, that kind of got displaced. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we went today to the studio, to the old studio, because, you know, we, we just still have some stuff there. Um, and it was quite difficult to go back, to walk back into a space where you spent, yeah. you know, like eight years building something and you know now you see it not only destroyed but also like there's layers of dust on it and you know like things are starting to literally deteriorate um so yeah i guess i mean like we just we're all you know everyone i know is in either um you know like this kind of reconstruction refixing rebuilding phase or um you know they they're they're making plans for for the exit of the country unfortunately mm, yes i uh... I can imagine things, maybe also Mia, you can uh, join us I, I'm with, with uh, what Hatim was saying is um, you, you lived in Beirut, you worked in Beirut, you understand the situation, you, you, you created or you worked, you, um, you programmed the festival, you supported artists, you have it uh, um, like um, organized some training, some workshops, thought of sustainability and strategies. And like, for example, today, you're, you're looking at this from the outside. What, what does it mean for you when you also, when you hear uh, Hatim saying this, uh, do you feel privileged in a sense? How do you look at the situation in Beirut? And how do how do you feel? Maybe you can get involved. So it it feels like you are in in between two worlds, and you already know very well what he's talking about: this uh, anxiety, this anguish, uh, the resilience. But at the same time, with time, at some point, you start feeling there is something that is uh, disappearing, and you need to get hold of. 
this is one, and at the same time, you're looking at this from the outside. Um, how, how do you feel you can get involved today in Beirut? I um, I'm not sure that I I'm looking at things from the outside honestly. Uh, I don't think when you have been uh, growing up uh, in uh, certain situations and in my case it was in Lebanon uh, that you ever not carry or stop carrying what you've learned or uh, uh, how you've been formed to face life, to face difficulties, obstacles. So of course, physically, uh, I'm, I'm further away. And on a personal level, maybe uh, I can miss things. But I think that um, it's the same priorities. It's the same, uh, it's the same uh, way of looking at things. Um, I don't believe that because physically I'm now in France that things should be uh, worked on differently. Of course, uh, maybe you are part of another context of another system, but your values are the same. The, the values that you have been carrying in your work and through years and time and that you've been fighting for are the same. And I think that uh, actually I want just to uh, to to uh, make a point about something is that we left uh, maybe also to better serve our purposes because the situation in Lebanon was uh, becoming extremely was, was going to reverse uh, on uh, on us as organizers as artists and uh, it would have been uh, impossible actually in uh, in the situ in the case of Mohammad, in the case of bipod in the case of uh, the, the Mohammad as a company also and me as a dancer it would have been very difficult uh, to continue serving so actually i think i left to better serve to better continue serving uh, uh, the same purposes and i think my relationship to the projects um, that we've been developing through Mokamat and Bipod and everything in Lebanon will continue. I mean, I hope now we have uh, even a, I mean, a worse situation with what's happening in Lebanon. Of course, it has always been difficult, but now it's even more difficult. But it's, it's I think, the occasion to even more fight for the things that we've been fighting for. Um, so uh, yes, actually, this is where we have to this is we have to keep the priorities in mind uh, and remember why we're doing the things that we're doing so yes physically here or there same fight same challenges same priorities uh, and you know yes for sure of course i can i can hear you very well and i i think also um, maybe we could at the same time, uh, with this, maybe probably Alex, uh, Hatem, you have some ideas also to mention. Uh, if just please uh, let me know, and we can make it a more dynamic conversation rather than me uh, feeling like uh, moderating uh, the thing. But I could, I could go on. I could continue because I would like to bring here um, a project that we started after. Um, after we uh, we left Beirut, also with the with the with the COVID uh, that happened, with with the cancellations, with everything cancelled. Of course, there is this idea of the the explosion in Beirut that happened after. But even like I said, for us there was the cancellation of a cultural center already. We felt also as if we uh, we we have to make this decision of of leaving the country. And when when the COVID started, we started uh, um, with the cancellation. We thought how how we can contribute to this, and maybe this is also the way of thinking in terms of resilience. Uh, it, it's strange, but maybe we are uh, kind of experts in crisis, which is not a very good thing. But uh, we 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 thought of a project which now we call. Sitern.live, 
which is to create a digital performance venue. If we're not able to implement C10 Beirut physically in Beirut, then uh, we we thought we we can go online. We can go with this um, uh, project uh, globally. We at the moment we're in the like the process. We already started in March, so it took a a lot of uh, uh, time working on this uh, with international partners as well. And hopefully we will be able to open uh, or launch this project end of November. And the idea of Citan Beirut is to emphasize these feelings of, of course it's online, but we want to emphasize the idea of the liveness, the idea of, of uh, live streaming in real time, like what is happening now. At the same time, to create, to think of culture in a different way, to think, and that's why maybe Mia, I asked you this question. I wanted to touch on how do we look to each other's, uh, maybe we, we have the same context to a certain extent, but also at the same time, uh, how much we're aware of what is happening, how much we're concerned of what is going on in culture or socially that could be reflected on culture or vice versa in other uh, places in the world. So with C10.live, this is what we're uh, attempting to do, uh, to think culturally, maybe uh, with the difficulties that we're facing with COVID, with the explosion specifically in Beirut, uh, with uh, uh, difficulties in other places of the world, we can rethink culture. We can rethink this kind of inherited cultural system that we just uh, accepted and, and we went through to think of it um, and to separate maybe between the industry and the values that we that drew us into, into what we do. Um, and there is one important direction in Citan.live is and, and this is comes from Citan Beirut. We would like to focus on projects that were not able to be realized in their cultural context. Um, um, of, yes, go ahead, Alex, of course. Yes. For me, the Citern.live is an absolute necessity and an urgency in, 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 in the field in Lebanon for now, because definitely we are uh, facing a very tough situation, but world, this is worldwide. Uh, noting that, that our incapacity to fill theaters uh, and to have a full house, and this is this is very sad for me. Uh, and it's it almost it's almost political now to go on stage. <laughs> we should uh, in rethinking uh, the, our perfor the performance space, but this definitely opens so much for uh, the uh, scene that you have. Uh, years and years fought for and uh, tried the best you could with residencies outside uh, Beirut uh, and spaces, several spaces that you didn't talk about uh, and schools. And, but I think we, we live in a, in a country that not everybody is um, prone to uh, get connected at a uh, uh, screen because uh, to see a, a performance because we we still have this uh, old school way of of seeing things and we don't you know very well that we don't have a very good connection in this country and it's it's, it's very important uh, in order to showcase online it is definitely very important and i think uh, c10.live is an absolute necessity and i say it a second time uh, but i think it would definitely uh, uh, serve more um, for the to for us uh, to reach uh, a, a wider uh, audience, but uh, I, I'm very engaged in um, in getting back to the stage, trying distanciation inside a theater because I you know as much as me and Mia or Hatem how the, uh, I think everybody is tired to stay at home and look at the screen. Uh, I, I am uh, fighting in order to get back to, uh, I, imagine I called a theater last week in order to book, like they didn't even, uh, they don't know if they can, they don't know how much uh, can we rent. It's so difficult 
now even more with the with the econom economic uh, crisis uh, and uh, the COVID crisis, the the political crisis, we don't know what to do anymore. So definitely, uh, Citern Live is a solution for this very sad reality we are living. Uh, but I think I'd be I would love to collaborate on this in a theater going live. This is I think for me the best form that can be because uh, hearing the applause, hearing people, hearing the breath of the of the public, and the cheers at the end uh, are definitely a, 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 how do you say a motor a motor um, a drive uh, a possibility for us to hook on a certain collective energy and keep on going. I, I, this trend of staying in front of cameras in order to perform uh, is interesting to, to think about, to, to test and to try to do something, but I, it's not, uh, we shouldn't uh, leave the theaters. We shouldn't let of the course. theaters die. For sure, for sure, Alex. It's, uh, I mean, I, I want to continue touring. I want to meet people. I want to connect with people. I want to be in theaters where I can also smell the spaces. I can uh, touch the place. The, uh, some, it could be sometimes emotional, but why not? This is something also we, uh, we felt it. But what we're talking about is definitely not, not in opposition not to put things on in opposition when we talk uh, digital and i can also hear the um, the difficulties in, uh, in in beirut in terms of internet but there is of course there is uh, possibilities what we need to probably for us this digital uh, project is not to say okay we go digital we don't want to go live it doesn't exist there is a slogan that we use for this digital is uh, like uh, 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 local cities, global bodies. And to really go from the locality, from this, this situation, from the liveness into more um, like global, the values are the, what's important and we don't have to put things together. But while you were, while you were talking, actually I was thinking of also the cultural scene in Beirut, the theaters in Beirut, uh, totally uh, shut down and not only from March, but even since uh, October uh, 2019, uh, with the explosion, probably even the, 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 the explosion with the COVID, this, the artists, they stopped the touring. They're not able to, because I know how, how the, much the cultural scene in Beirut is dynamic, how much the artists are also connected internationally. And this is what kept us all uh, uh, like to sustaining what we have and, and doing the work. But it's, what One, is it like? Oh, oh, sorry, I'm cutting you, but I, yes. I went in, on a small tour to check on theaters. And I was shocked by what I saw, actually, mm. because we should tell the people that, unfortunately, uh, having a, a war culture, we have all our theaters to do, <laughs> minus two. Like, we don't have any theater that is uh, like Citerne Beirut. Uh, it's underground. Absolutely. Citerne Beirut was one of the uh, very, uh, this only space that where we can be on the ground floor. So even on, on underground, theaters have a huge uh, lo losses in uh, material. Yes. The, the explosion uh, was, uh, did a huge impact on the theaters and they need mm. to be rebuilt plus all what they are facing already without of course public funding because there's no public funding for theaters as eventually some events that we artists do for free in order to, to uh, fundraise for the theater in order to have a theater that is still functioning. And also another problem that people don't know outside is that when we say theaters in, in Lebanon, it's not what everybody might think that a theater is with an art director that has a program or something. Our theaters, we, we rent them for doing whatever we want to do. It's, they don't yes, have- they're not production houses. They don't produce, they don't program. It's more like space that the artists uh, would rent. And this is like, of course, this is not easy. Uh, and it's the same probably for uh, the, the 
cult other cultural venues or galleries or that were Mia, you want to say something? I don't want to interrupt. I, I just, uh, but this is why, like, the idea of this show and what Hatem was saying, like, and also, like, the, the, the idea of, okay, so now we're in this situation, okay? Everything is destroyed. Already the situation before wasn't glorious. It was extremely hard. And now it's even worse. So what becomes interesting now, it's like the people who immediately uh, go and uh, start building again and uh, this survival thing that makes you, you know, go further, not stop, not being a victim in this also and, and continue what you're doing and continue fighting. So this is why now that everything is destroyed and now that on top of it, we have like a massive uh, pandemia that uh, even is uh, making things worse what do we do so so this is why i want to to also uh, uh, like for 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 me the priority is to think of this is really like uh, it's like i have uh, an example of uh, uh, someone I know, the house was totally destroyed and the same like after one hour, the person was already cleaning everything and uh, talking to the to the guys to repair uh, the windows. And so <laughs> the, the problem is that in Lebanon, we, do, we never had the luxury of time. We never had the luxury of money. Uh, we don't we, we're formed to react. Uh, but react not as reaction, but to to act, to act quickly, uh, and and um, and to set immediately the next priorities. So this is the situation now. So what are the priorities? What do we do? So also in response to to what Alex was was saying, I absolutely understand uh, like this digital thing, and maybe this is not ideal, but it's also good that we think the digital in order to because either we want it or not uh, there are other solutions which is to reduce the audience for example in the theaters or but then what other solutions do we have you know and to make it interesting maybe we can go to this place which is the, that we call digital not in opposition but to first frame it like to frame it as a cultural space online and not having this um, open uh, like uh, Instagram, Facebook, where the artistic values can sometimes be lost. So to maybe create a frame, maybe like not exclude audience, but on the contrary, to include more audience, like at the time where, where frontiers and, and, uh, and borders are closing and closing, there's a danger uh, in sliding into very, I don't know, something really frightening. Uh, so, so we have, I think it, it's important to, to think well the, the digital and to take all the advantages possible uh, that, that we can and to make it a better place, if you want, for, uh, for artists. So a place that is protected, for example, that is framed, that respect the artistic work. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, yes. Um, and actually to, uh, wh while you were talking, I was thinking, you know what worries me uh, most is, of course, this, this situation is happening at the moment. Maybe we're all focused how what can we do now what we can do but what i'm what scares me is how is the situation in five years and ten years and this is for me where is the um, uh, uh, the danger because this is the moment maybe we can react to certain things although the culture i could say the cultural scene in beirut is is nearly dead to a certain extent, uh, a lot of galleries, theaters, spaces are destroyed. On top of that, the the artists themselves. I don't know, like it's how much how much uh, the artists are able to involve themselves and create and think of this. Hatim, maybe you want to say something? Yeah, um, I just wanted to, I mean, like we're, we're painting a very kind of like grim uh, landscape of the, of the cultural scene in Beirut. Um, and of course, I mean, like these difficulties and all of the problems that we're facing, 
and all of the catastrophes that we're living are, are obviously very real. Um, but at the same time, I wouldn't be so uh, hasty to jump into saying, you know, like that, that the cultural uh, scene is dead. I know, I know, Omar, that's not necessarily what you what you're what you're uh, trying to imply. Um, what I want to say is that basically, there, there, you know, like with all of this destruction, there is also still something that is very essential and very important that's coming out, um, and it's you know like. You can see it in so many different guises. I wanted to say earlier that you know, like the the you know, like when when uh, Alex goes, you know, like is is uh, summoned by the police by the by the state to be questioned. You know, like when people go and stand in front of the police station in solidarity, and when you have you know an uprising that has you know, like even though uh, in the in the big terms. You know, like this uprising has failed to to topple the, the the state and the regime. I mean, obviously, until today, you know, like one year after the after the uprising, we are still under the same uh, uh, murderous and uh, um, thieving rulers. But still, there is something that has been broken definitely in the streets of Beirut. And in a sense, for me, this is also quite you know, like the the the, the streets in themselves turned into a stage somehow. And I, I mean, I'm sure that that uh, Alex can also attest to that, and perhaps you know could add a little bit more uh, to 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 this uh, to, to this thought. Uh, but I mean, like there is there is something that is very important that happened. I mean, I feel like there was you know, like the Lebanese people have been living in a coma since 1990. And not until now uh, did they, they somewhat, you know, like wake up or partially wake up from the, from this coma. And uh, instead of only just reacting to the things that are being thrown at them, you know, they they finally took the stage. They finally said, you know, like we're gonna actually, you know, come and you know change the game or say something different and open up the possibilities of of something that is that is uh, that is uh, uh, you know going to going to change in in this country and even though you know like right now we are living in a really really dark time um, i mean i i personally am you know like bidding farewell to to friends and family you know like every week so you know like i know that that things are you know quite devastating and they're going to they're going to continue to be uh, difficult but still you know like i cannot help but you know like still see the beauty of this kind of like uh, something that is coming out of all of this destruction. I mean, th this is something that you also see in the solidarity of people right after the explosion. You know, like we at one one moment, uh, Maya, my work partner, and I went to the office. Um, you know, just a few days after the explosion, and we were you know just like literally sitting in the rubble and not knowing where to start. When you know, like a group of like three three young girls come in with a, with brooms and i mean I'm, I'm sure you've heard all of these stories but it was it was you know like we were completely overwhelmed by this because you know like in 10 minutes there were like 20 young men and women you know like clearing all of the rubble in the studio and you know like cleaning everything up and taking such good care and you know like trying to bring things back you know so this this sense of solidarity that has that has you know like for me uh, uh, perhaps started one year ago, where, you know, with the, with the beginning of the uprising, where you know, like all of the differences and whatnot have kind of like dissolved. Um, but so, so on one hand, there is all of the sense of solidarity and you know, like uh, a sense of uh, belonging to something that is bigger than just you know, like these big uh, national uh, ideas or, or 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 national themes. Um, but on top of that. Even the cultural institution, like even if we're thinking about the cultural sector, the cultural institution in and of itself is being put to put to question. You know, like we know that institutions have started asking themselves, what are we doing? You know, like is like we know that now because of the pandemic and because of the 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 the, the, uh, the economic crisis, people are not being able to afford, if you want. You know, like the, the the normal or typical or whatever little of you know, like the cultural production that that was happening in Beirut. But but now, you know, people are being forced to think outside of these norms or outside of these um, uh, uh, frameworks that are in in so many ways, you know, like shackling maybe the artists or shackling the production of of art. And this is where I feel like there's there's you know, people are starting to think of alternatives of how to produce culture outside you know like of either the institution or the gallery or the theater or 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 um, and i think that this for me is something you know like that is very exciting in fact and you know like quite heartwarming yeah uh, i, I want to alex uh, yes 
because I'm so happy that Hatem talked about this, because as you know me all, I'm an extremely positive, all the time, almost delusional person. But uh, uh, what is what we saw on the streets, what happened uh, since the 17th of October was the uprising to the, the post uh, blast, uh, the solidarity Hatem talked very well about it. I'm gonna say something about the, the, the solidarity we saw in, on, in, on the streets and when people would be in, uh, in police uh, posts uh, it was for me. It was uh, such an honor and such uh, defiance when they asked me in the police station, "What do you do?" And I said to them, "I'm a dancer." You would, I would have never in my life dared to to say to the police, "I'm a dancer," and they didn't even dare to say anything wrong because there was 300 person outside screaming. They knew that there is the the fear has been broken. And as we all know, fear is very effective. And with the 17th of October uprising, there's something that has been broken. And honestly, also, I defied the military court uh, with a lot of solidarity from all of you guys when uh, I had to be to be uh, to go there. And I did a huge uh, uh, solidarity campaign that happened. And at the 7 a.m., they told me to say it was canceled. So we can turn things like yes there is a lot of sadness that there's a lot of things that a lot of blackness a lot of horrible things that happened to us but there is not the resilience i would say a defiance that is born and we we are very proud of it and taken it uh, and i think we will never go back to what was before. There is something that is going to build up and accumulate with time. And uh, there is a, a political system that is going to end and we are going to end it. And the generations after us are going to are extremely open and see what is happening. And they are understanding the situation. And I think the new generations of artists, of young artists, of young activists that are now on the ground and lived what, what we all lived together during those last months, I think this is a huge experience for them that would be a huge uh, in, that will have a huge impact on their lives, on their careers, and uh, it will be extremely inspiring in order to defy this statu quo that has been here since the end of the civil war. Yes, I, in a sense, I definitely, I totally agree with you. I always, um, I also believe that accidents are new departures. It's like, I like this sentence in one of uh, Orhan Pamuk's novels. Uh, but what I'm, for me, it's it's a bit scary when also we we go with these issues of resilience. I totally uh, understand. I love these moments of solidarity, of defiance, like you said, uh, Alex. We definitely need the stronger uh, solidarity. We need this uh, wall of fear to break, to change, and it happened. It happened already because I also believe 17th of October 2019, we went into another uh, phase in, in Lebanon and this is extremely important. However, it is, it's a long way. And this is what, is, what I, I think about. This is what I, um, I'm concerned a lot about. These moments of solidarity are extremely important, but how can we take these moments and think about it in the long run? That's why I say I'm worried about what's going to happen in five years and 10 years. Um, I'm, I'm sure, I'm confident also that there will be, uh, Hatim, what you mentioned about alternatives. I think we, all of us, we were working with this kind of mentality for alternative and probably a younger generation or even us will continue working with alternatives in Beirut. However, the situation, we, we need to think of the long run. Um, when I said the cultural scene is, is dead, I meant that it's, uh, it is an, an extremely difficult situation. I mean, look at the world, look at, at Europe. Let's take Europe, let's take 
uh, uh, France today only with the COVID, stri uh, struggling with the COVID-19, it's already a mess. It's already uh, chaos everywhere in the world with culture. So the situation in Beirut is difficult. And uh, we, we don't want to say it's that there is no culture, there will be alternative for sure. But also we need to be uh, uh, realistic and see how can we build on this? How can we open these possibilities, these channels, uh, these young, um, uh, young uh, artists, let's say, these young initiatives, if, or the, the existing initiative, how can they sustain in this situation? Because you said, you mentioned every week, you're saying uh, a goodbye to friends. We're, we, like me and Mia, we are already in France, although we're, we feel committed, we feel connected, we feel, but still there is a certain reality that is happening. How much of these cultural centers, um, there was of course a minimal support, uh, uh, thanks to a bit of funding, some grants, some institutions that are already existing in Beirut, but the state is in a coma, is deaf, it does, is not there. This is the big question for me. And this is the scary moment is how can we, uh, like even when you think of culture today, how can you relate to the audience? What, like wh where are the people? Are they also in this kind of, uh, we were talking last week, I was talking with a friend about the audience and, and with Bipod and how the audience actually pushed us into our programming because the audience, they were kind of pushing us to go further and further and not accept uh, things as, as they are. So this is maybe what, what we need to think about also and think about realistically. Uh, building on beautiful moments, strong moments like the ones you mentioned, but extremely important to think in the long run, how can they sustain themselves? How, how can they continue building and not only uh, continue a building, but also uh, being able uh, to, to progress, being able uh, to, um, uh, I don't want to use the word educate, but being able to, to develop, to grow, uh, grow in the sense in depth also in terms of what they do, artistically, culturally, and socially in relation to the, to the cultural and social environment. Educate, no, you, 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 you used the right word. And I think you know, education is very important. And uh, we are working in the field of contemporary art and uh, we need to educate a little bit because performances are still, they don't have the tools to understand contemporary dance. We need to, uh, in a way, uh, uh, democratize the ways, one, how to see the, the, the how to see a performance. And I think uh, a Citern Live is a very good uh, uh, first solution for that. And, and that's in that way, in order to say, okay, Let's try to find new ways. And I think by uh, starting to have, I think it's going to be difficult at the beginning to start to perform online for, for Lebanese audiences. But I think the more we will do it, the more people will get the idea and will be more um, accommodated to know that there, is, there are performances that are going live, not recorded, but live doing the performance live Real for them. Time. To very important uh, but, but it doesn't yeah it doesn't replace what's important is to think of expanding rather than going from one thing to another absolutely um, yeah um, I, i'd like to give an example of a, of a project uh, that uh, started uh, during the the lockdown of the pandemic um, and I think, you know, like for me, I, I, I like to say that, you know, like this is the project that I never thought that I was missing and, but now I cannot live without. So, I mean, it's a radio, it's a radio project. So Radio Al-Hara, it's a, it's a project that started in, uh, in, uh, in Bethlehem, in, in Bethlehem, in, uh, in Palestine uh, by a group of friends who, you know, like really had just, you know, like they love music and they, they, you know, they started this thing online. And what this platform has created today is something that is really like unbelievable. 
the fact that you have programming of DJs uh, or, you know, sometimes talk shows and sometimes, you know, like uh, conversations and sometimes uh, 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 music programming and whatnot, but it brought together a network of people that didn't know each other necessarily across the Arab world and even beyond that, of course. Um, and it's, it's fascinating because you're all of a sudden, you know, like I remembered what radio is because I mean, like I grew up here, you know, like all of the, you know, we, you know, in Lebanon, we have all of these commercial radios that you barely can listen to. I mean, nothing that you can listen to. All of a sudden you have this, <clears throat> this idea where there's, a, there's, you know, like on your computer, you have someone playing music for one hour and then there's live comments and people starting to have conversations and making new friendships and connections and sharing music and talking about this and oh what's this reference and I don't know what and now I have you know programs that I follow every week that I have to listen to these programs and whatnot there is again you know like this this idea of like the alternative platforms it's not a question you know like you know like some nights it's almost like I feel like I'm literally clubbing I'm in a club with people who are you know like in Palestine and in Jordan and in Berlin and I don't know where and this sense you know like that that obviously we lost because of the pandemic and because of the distancing and 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 is could be could be somehow recuperated or or translated into other things and this is where you know like the digital at the end of the day you know like digital platforms are tools so i mean obviously as you said they will never or they shouldn't intend to replace you know like uh, live performances or whatnot or even you know like galleries uh, you know seeing seeing visual arts and, and all of that but the idea is that we could use these tools in, in alternative ways and be able to connect with people that even on an actual stage you would not have been you would not have been able to to reach perhaps um, and so so again these these possibilities especially you know like with younger generations who are more and more uh, uh, connected and and versatile in, in this language uh, there is there is a lot of potential for 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 exciting things to happen i know i'm, I'm like sounding like the, the very optimistic uh, guy here in the in the group but uh, uh actually hatem uh, me too i find it like extremely exciting at some point once uh, i could calm down on uh, a little bit on the situation i started seeing uh, infinite possibilities and it, it's really great of course it's a new phase for, for a lot of uh, art makers and uh, even for organizations. For, I mean, look at us, we're meeting on Zoom. I mean, the Zoom thing, of course, we get tired of it. Of course, it's special, but, but I, I kind of like it because I connect. I mean, I'm, I'm so happy to be able to talk to you guys uh, rather than not talking to you. So this is what I was saying in the beginning also, like to take the advantages and always try to see the bright side of things. But also I want to come back to the, uh, what Oma was asking initially uh, about what, so how can we do it? What maybe are the things that we can set to go further? And I think uh, the, the fact to adapt first is very important. We need to adapt uh, and, and we need to be very careful of the needs uh, and things that maybe didn't work before, just to listen to the needs, the things that we need today. And probably the fact that what you're saying about theaters, Hatem, I, I love because things don't necessarily happen in theaters and studios. I mean, I'm not trying, uh, I, I'm, I'm going to be, I, I have to be very careful with what I'm saying because I love theaters and, and I, I, I grew up in theaters. But this is not like the transmission can also happen in other places. It doesn't have to be in a theater, it doesn't, it can be uh, anywhere. Um, so, uh, so of course, uh, uh, the possibilities are much, uh, maybe are opening today. And also if we, like, I know it's difficult to set, uh, priorities because we need to think emergency. We need to think short term. What do we do now? I know that in Lebanon, things are like extremely difficult. I mean, not only in Lebanon for us, we're like in a survival mode, uh, I, uh, how are we going to continue next month? This is the, the also the, the problem. But I think if we if we set the priorities on the short term and look at the long term, it's maybe the best way to navigate also because at some point we're going to arrive in one year and we're going to arrive in, in two years. And I think there's a very crucial uh, question, which is how do we 
continue these how do we transmit how do we continue this transmission so we cannot wait and and let things happen we need to be active we need we, we need to uh, like for example for for practices now uh, we have to continue transmitting uh, classes our fear as Mokamat, for example Lama, you were asking in the beginning how are we gonna like where are they gonna be formed how are we gonna generate new ge how are we gonna create new generations of dancers for example how, what kind of formation are we going to give them uh, you know and the audience the same i mean we have we have to be able to engage the new generation we have to be to think of the audience also because i really think that the audience can be a really an active uh, element in in the in our resistance towards culture i, I want to say actually something from uh, like all of this it seems um, for sure there are always alternatives, different tools. What the core issue is what we're looking for is what are we saying or what do we want to say? What, where, what is the cause here? What, what is, um, what is the, the drive or the motivation for culture? Because this is the core issue for me. And uh, this is maybe the essence of why we used to go to theater, why we used to do project. So when we think of the values, when we think of the essence, and most importantly, when we think of this drive, what do we want to say? What is, what is this strong thing that, is, that pushes us to say things? Then of course, uh, things happen. We connect in different ways. We, 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 culture is not a box that if you go to the theater, then you get culture. If you don't go to the theater, then you're not culture. It's more about value also. It's, and how do we deal with this value? The, 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 the radio project example, Hatem is wonderful. And it's, it is really a, a beautiful project. And I'm sure there will be a lot of other projects, whether we're talking about digital or other ways of, uh, 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 tools, other alternative possibilities, alternative structures. It is more also uh, uh, dealing with these tools as an artistic medium. The digital needs to be an artistic medium. It's not only a screen. It's this interaction that you ex that, uh, you explained, for example, in the radio project is what really gives it its strength, what gives it its uh, presence, its value. And probably this is where we we need to, um, to to think about things and to look, and not only in Lebanon. Of course, we're we're talking about uh, things maybe uh, in its locality, but it's also in other places. We we don't have to be worried about. Uh, okay, can I say one thing? We're, Sorry, just to finish this idea, because of course we're worried about things from an sometimes economic industrial perspective, which I could understand in order to have sustainability. But what is what we need to be worried about more is the values and the 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 mediums themselves, what we want to say. Sorry, Alex. Yeah, go ahead. No, uh, for me, what I'm worried about now is honestly um, uh, how I'm going to uh, decentralize culture outside of Beirut. Like I have a project that is going on now. I have talked about it on Facebook and I said, okay, I have given dance classes in my village and I have seen the visit, the visage, uh, the, the face faces. Of, uh, the faces of the students illuminate like in rarely how I have ever seen and have, and I've been a dance teacher for 15 years now. And actually a lot of uh, people started contacting me uh, to give the dance classes in their uh, village. And actually, I'm going to start in the Shouf uh, village. It's a mountainous area very soon. Another one in the south, here in the north, e eventually in Beirut. But I think democratization of culture is the most important, along with decentralization. Uh, it can happen in a, on a vir virtual uh, platform. But for me, my audience, I, I, I try to reach it by myself 
uh, yes. uh, in, in uh, outside areas where I can make, wh where it makes sense for me. Like it's important for me to reach uh, international audiences, but it's definitely more important for me to go uh, uh, on the four corners of my country and try to dance where we are definitely losing a lot on the terms of dancing because we have religious uh, issues that uh, don't let people dance. So my resistance comes also from this point. Yeah, it's mentioning this. Um, the, uh, sorry, Mia, you want to say something? No, I'm glad that uh, Alex uh, is mentioning this because this has been a priority for Makamat for years. And actually now we're starting also classes in the Shuf. I mean, we've been doing for several years we, but we did it already, Alex. I don't know where you were, but we, we, were, we were giving for years classes and we actually built a studio, um, one in uh, Ba'alin, one which is uh, also, you're talking of communities and religious. Uh, we, were, we were trying to link two villages. So we linked like Ba'alin and Deir al-Amar. So we had a studio at uh, Institut France with also with Institut Francais and, uh, you know, the, uh, what's it called? You know, this uh, place, um, the, the old synagogue. Uh, synagogue, synagogue, merci. It's, yes. <laughs> the old synagogue. But Mia, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's good you mentioned this, but I also with this, uh, when we mention uh, like authorities and power and religion and these um, uh, uh, patriarchal structures, I'm also, uh, because when we talk about culture, we talk about about uh, probably or about all of this. And I know Hatem, you're preparing an, a new edition for uh, Journal Safar, which is focused on the theme of power. I, am I correct or? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're yeah, absolutely that's, that's right. Um, uh, yeah. So I mean, we're basically again, you know, like out of this this uh, really difficult situation. Sometimes, you know, like things come out. Uh, I mean, for example, the, the issue before uh, this one, uh, which was about migrations, came out from, uh, it was really, it's almost like funny that it came out from uh, confinement. So it was the first time that we were working remotely and, you know, like we actually put the magazine together and sent it to print uh, while, you know, each one of us was, was at home and this was back in, um, in April. Um, and now, you know, um, the theme of power is, is, is the theme of our next issue, which hopefully will come out before the end of this year. Um, and, you know, we, we obviously wanted to talk about so many things that are related to power, so many things that are related to, you know, like the, the, the oppression that, that power could, could bring and the violence that, uh, that power could bring. Uh, for us, at least, you know, like here, we, we feel it quite tangibly in, in Beirut or in Lebanon, uh, but also in the celebrating, you know, the things that we've been talking about, like the power of, you know, like people just simply coming together, you know, just standing in one place and how much power this could exert um, against, you know, like what, uh, you know, any system that, that, is, uh, that is in place. Um, so, so, yeah, the, to, to just to, to, to also talk about this uh, thing, about the question of what do we do, what do we do and how do we do it? I mean, for me, one, one, one of the things that is, an ultimate drive is to always have a voice and you know like for me you know like this is hap this happens through through publishing just like uh, you know Alex does it through through dance or through also teaching people how to dance yes. or uh, with me about you know like you know like having these uh, schools where uh, and communities where you're teaching people about a uh, dance or or any or performance um, for me it's about it's about publishing it's about you know like having people who perhaps you haven't heard their voice or their opinion, you know, like make their, their opinion heard, make their opinion, you know, like uh, um, public. Um, and like for uh, one, one of the examples of the, you know, like the last issue about migrations was, you know, to, to discuss, for example, the kafala system, which is, you know, like this horrible, you know, almost contemporary slavery system that, that is uh, in place in Lebanon and many other countries uh, in the region uh, that kind of like, um, is basically the work contract of migrant workers, um, and you know, like the whole fight against uh, you know, like this uh, this terrible uh, system, basically. I feel, for me personally, also, I feel uh, more and more that uh, 
we this idea of engagement of culture is coming to the foreground it's like kind of a priority for me personally that um uh, of course without changing into a propaganda uh, we need to to keep uh, the the, uh, the this artistic proposals at the core issue but then it seems more and more um reliable maybe if i may use this word um culture needs to be engaged and when you say alex for example you go to the shuv to give classes or to other places and i remember i remember you were like mentioning that you even you were going to to tier to give this like you drive two or three hours to to give a class i think this is also engagement this is strength uh, and and it's the simple things of breaking hierarchies, of decentralizing things. Maybe in, in Lebanon, we go uh, more, more and more things happen uh, in Beirut. Um, you, you want, do you want to mention something about this, uh, Alex? Because I'm also, I know we, I think we spoke maybe briefly a long, uh, few months ago about this and I remember this because maybe for for people watching us they don't know what like exactly how you teach what is uh, what's the ballad uh, the contemporary ballad that you you work with and how people receive this um actually uh, i thank you for saying ballad because you know i saw my attachment to this nomination what is known in the united states as belly dancing because it's it's a very colonial nomination i try to uh, change the way uh, we look at it. So for uh, a man doing uh, a woman dance between brackets, of course, it's very problematic on a lot of levels for a lot of communities. So it's a big challenge in order for me to, one, impose respect, two, bring the art form of this dance uh, and to get it out a bit of co uh, cabarets and restaurants in order to show more respect for, uh, for this art form. So it's very difficult to, uh, people would have no problem with ballet classique or contemporary dance or tango or salsa or whatever, but would have specifically a problem with this kind of dance because I don't know why. Uh, so I try really to, uh, the maximum that I can to bring it to, uh, Mia, I don't know why she put a hint for me that you did this before. I was not trying to compete or anything. <laughs> what I do is a balladi dance, and I put yes. it. I go from village to village to 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 bring it to people. So uh, for me to have uh, old people that would just by curiosity come to check and and want to just say few words for us when we finish the class that 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 brought for them so much happiness. It's already a victory. A victory. Uh, when uh, uh, women uh, uh, assume their sexuality through dance, because it's a very it, it's a, it's a dance that can be also have a certain eroticism for it uh, uh, to assume this dimension of the body in a, in, a, in a society that acts essentially on the body, uh, and really I drive hours and hours in order to give a workshop or to dance in. Uh, places that they don't want anyone to dance, be it in the south or Hermel or Balbag, uh, it's uh, rewarding for me. It's really rewarding, and it's a, it's a way to to reach out also because we tend to forget that Lebanon is not Beirut, and what there is in Beirut uh, uh, is not uh, enough for the whole Lebanese society. So we, we need to go uh, out yeah. and although, reach. Although it's a very small country with uh, mm -hmm. great I just to guys. Say that we, I, I was just, uh, Alex, joining you. And of course not, I know at all, it's not a hint. I was joining your enthusiasm about the importance of decentralizing because I also remember the joy and uh, of these people who cannot necessarily reach dance. So I love the fact that you're doing this and I, current, I encourage it 100%. Thank you. 
We, I just want to highlight that we have five minutes uh, left. So uh, it would be, uh, it, I would be happy to hear um, kind of uh, ideas, resume, uh, maybe you want to say uh, something um <laughs> go ahead <then. laughs> i didn't know uh, who was uh, I, I wasn't uh, concentrated yeah like, go alex go. no 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 go i I, uh, I lost my thought you go ahead alex <laughs> no, i wanted just to say that we have so much to do, but uh, I think, I'm, uh, first of all, I'm so happy that you are here, Hatem, because uh, as performance, as performers, we definitely need uh, other majors and other artists around in order to be better together and to make it a change or to make a difference, at least. We can't do it alone and we need to be inclusive of other uh, mediums and other uh, and to collaborate with other artists in order to make this change that Omar was speaking about before and how we will bring it. And this is also a very important medium collaboration because we tend with the lack of uh, public funding, we, we tend to isolate ourselves and to work alone and do our things alone. But it's so important to get together. And I think Omar has, and Mia also has had this amazing idea of bringing more and more artists together in order to be more efficient and less alone. It's so important. I think we don't have a choice. Maybe we have one minute each, Hatim and Mia. <laughs> Um, Go ahead. Yeah, <laughs> but basically, I just wanted, uh, you know, like to to. I mean, I agree with you, Alex, one hundred percent on this idea of you know, like collaboration and learning from each other. I mean, I learned a lot, you know, like from uh, you know, like uh, working in the theater with uh, Rabbi Amrouwe, for example. You know, even though you know, I, he told me I want you to act in my play. I said I'm not an actor. He said, Well, you know, now now you're an actor. So, um, I think you know, like as you're saying, you know, I think it's very enriching to 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 work with this idea of uh, interdisciplinarity. Um, and, and of course, we have to do it. You know, it's not it's not you know we're maybe partially we're forced to, forced into it, but but I think it's it's very enriching. And I I mean this is something that I'm I, I teach you know like well, when I'm teaching in the graphic design department at the university, this is one of the most important uh, most valuable lessons I think. Mia. Yes. Uh... Very brief, briefly, maybe just to say that I think that what we're doing is already something that what Hatem was saying that opening the dialogue is already maybe acting upon uh, all these uh, difficulties. So this is great. I hope we continue uh, in this. And uh, I think it's the key. And of course, it can lead to, to, to solidarity, but in the meaning of like a real active solidarity with alliances, also people uh, helping each other, because I think this is what's going to happen. This is what's happening. This is what happened in Lebanon. It's a great example that you gave of people helping. This is, I think, also a key of um, helping each other and, um, and uh, keep an open mind, just keeping an open mind, uh, open to new approaches uh, and uh, new ways of doing things. Yes, great. I want to uh, to thank you for this beautiful conversation. I think this word of uh, solidarity probably we 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 have to be together. There is it's it's not a choice. It's beautiful also this awareness. I feel there is <clears throat> the awareness of being together in the differences. We need to uh, to imagine things moving. Also, this kind of uh, imagination in the change in the transition. Um, but it's it also brings a lot of. Uh, we need courage probably today. We need a lot of courage. Uh, to to accept change without feeling that change uh, is loss. It's not loss, and this is maybe what is um, what gives us the drive. I want to thank 
like uh, Simon Dov, I want to, to thank the CESC ArtsLink also for this opportunity. And thank you dearly also for this beautiful conversation that we have. Um, thank you. Thank you, Omar.